Hello. Yes, we meet again this week. I'm happy to see all of you. I can see you by faith. I believe you can also see me from your end. So welcome. And uh, today we are going to be dealing with the topic, uh, dealing with my insecurities. I started the other week um, on this topic, but the other week was mainly I was talking about don't lead me on, right? So today I believe we'll have fun, we'll be blessed. I'll be brief, very brief, but I believe it will bless somebody. I believe it will open your eyes to truths that probably you haven't gotten an opportunity or the privilege to know about in the past. So I want to start with the first point, okay? I'm Kelvin Obonyo, for those who don't know me. I'm hoping to get to interact with you more and more as time goes by. So I'll just start uh, with the first point. I want us today to look at dealing with my insecurities. And I don't want us to take it lightly. This is not something that we can just assume is a light matter. It is something that is affecting so many people. And I'm really hoping that I'm not just going to talk to entertain and make you feel good, but it's actually uh, going to help somebody and it's going to revolutionize somebody. Send in your comments. Uh, let us know how this is impacting you. Let us know how this is helping you. I believe you can hear me. I'm audible enough from the other end. So the first point, what causes people to be insecure? What brings the insecurities that people have? The first thing is actually rejection. It is the most powerful, and I've decided to start with that because rejection is usually very deep-rooted. Rejection does a lot of harm than so many people can ever imagine. So I know, I know that it's going to, to, it's going to really help somebody uh, at the end of the day. So I want to read uh, just a small portion of scripture, and then we'll continue. Right? I'll just read one verse, and then we'll continue. I want to read um, Proverbs uh, chapter thirteen, verse twelve. And it says, uh, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. Meaning that if, if, you, can, if you continually get disappointments, if you continually get dead ends in your life, it reaches a point you feel like giving up. It reaches a point it becomes useless to hope in God. It reaches a point people lose their hope in love. Because we've heard very clearly it says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. When you're continually disappointed, you reach a place where you don't trust anybody. You reach a place where you are crushed, where you, you die from the inside. You are living outside, you can see you are walking, but from within you're already crushed. There's a true story I like about two fish which were put in an aquarium and the scientists were testing something. These two fish, they, the scientist came in and put a glass wall between them. It was a transparent glass wall. And so every time the fish woke up in the morning, they could come and swim very fast to want to greet each other. But every time they were coming so fast, they could hit that glass wall. And it was really painful. Because every time these fish were swimming towards each other, they could hit their head so hard on that glass wall until it registered in their mind. So the scientists did that for like a month. Then eventually they removed that glass wall quietly when the fish were asleep. And they noticed something, that the fish could swim very fast. But the moment the fish reached that place where that glass wall used to be, the fish could do a U-turn. Because in the mind, the fish knew the limitation was still there. That is how bad bondage is. That is how bad rejection is. It can give you a permanent scar. Whereby when you reach that place of brokenness, 
you automatically switch off. You automatically do a U-turn. There are people you tell them hi. The moment you do that, they automatically switch off. The painful memories come back. They remember their ex who left them with a baby and walks out on them. They remember the person who, who killed their love that they had inside to give. the so much zeal they had that was taken away. The moment you try to talk to them, you remind them that. And they feel crushed. And just like these two fish that were always swimming and hitting that glass wall. Maybe you're in that place. You are in that place where you are insecure because somebody hurt you so bad that you don't know how to let go anymore. And so that's why I've said rejection is the worst one. It is the first one. I'll start with it. I want to look at a character uh, in the Bible called David. You see, David, in as much as we never see outright rejection, you can tell that he was rejected because he was looking for affirmation from Saul. A wrong person because his dad, his own dad Jesse, uh, didn't show so much affirmation for him. So it leads me to my first point. When you don't get love in the right place, you will look for it in the wrong places. That was David. He didn't get love in his own home. So what happened? He went to Saul's house to get love. And for those who are good students of the Bible... There's a place Saul tried to kill David. Saul actually tried to pin David to the wall. And, and David eluded the arrow. In fact, the Bible says, had David not uh, dunked, that, that arrow would have pierced him. So this is my point. There are people who are in the wrong places. There are people who are in the wrong relationships. There are people who are being abused. And like David, somebody is almost killing them because they are being beaten every day. But do you know why they stay? Because at least there, they feel loved. At least they feel somebody cares. Because all they've known is chaos. The problem with a sick person is most of the time they don't know they are sick emotionally. They think they know love, but what they are calling love for somebody who is healthy, he can be able to tell them that that is abuse. And so you can see David trying so hard to please somebody who's trying to kill him. Because the fatherly love that he was hoping to get from home, he did not get it. There's somebody watching me and you are in an abusive relationship and you keep up with a lot of abuse. And the reason is because you're insecure. You are afraid like David. That, what if I leave this man? What if I leave this woman and I never get someone else who accepts me? So the number one reason for insecurity, as I've said, is rejection. It causes you to bear and to tolerate anything. Because at the end of the day, you are feeling that this is better. I want to take it further. Uh, when David was going for battle, Saul gave him some clothes, some armory, and told him, put on this. I want you to go and fight with this. But when David tried to wear those clothes, nothing was fitting. The, those clothes were too baggy for him. And David just said, no, th this is not comfortable for me. This is, this is too big for me. You see, the problem when you're trying to get love from the wrong place, the love never fits. You try to wash the house for that guy, it's still not enough because you are misplaced. So everything you are wearing is baggy. Everything you are trying to do in that relationship is baggy. And it's not working. Because you're not even supposed to be there in the first place. Get healed of rejection. Get healed of that. Understand that you are loved. Understand that you are precious. Know your worth. There's somebody who said, the day you understand your worth, you stop making discounts. The reason we sell ourselves so cheap most time is because we don't know our worth. We feel so useless, we feel so used, we doubt if there's anyone who will love us again. And so because of that, we give up. So deal with the rejection, number one. It will help you overcome the insecurities. Because these insecurities we have are the things that cause us to lead people on. We lead people on because we don't think we are good enough. To just go 
and start a conversation with somebody. We don't think we are good enough to just go and present our case. And so we feel we have to use tricks. We have to use very funny ways. I want to say the second point, because I've said today, we'll not have a very long time, just a short time, which I believe will help so many people, but there'll be very deep points. So I want to check the second point. I've said the first one is rejection. The second thing is familiarity. Familiarity. I'll return you back to that uh, reference verse that I gave, Proverbs 13, 12. You see, it says continuous disappointment. Continual disappointment makes the heart grow sick. When you've been disappointed so many times, let me tell you, it doesn't matter what people tell you. You just feel like they are making noise. There are people who actually can't even accept this video I'm making. I'm sure there are people who even saw the poster. And the reason they are not tuned in right now, the reason they are like, ah, there's nothing new is going to tell me is because they've been disappointed so many times. They've gotten familiar. They've gotten familiar to love. They have gotten familiar to God. They have gotten familiar to authority, to family. There's nothing new you can actually tell them. They feel they've seen it all. They've been heartbroken many times that they lost count. Such a person, it is very hard to encourage, very hard to advise. So if you're going to deal with your insecurities, could you kindly please deal with your familiarity? Deal with the familiarity that you have. That uh, I know this man. They'll always say that and then after two weeks he'll disappear. You see, you are too familiar. You're already expecting disaster where there is none. There are people who are too familiar with heart issues. You try to take them out, they, they, they put you down. They tell you no. I already know how this will end. Uh, let's just stay in the house and watch a movie. There are people who don't know how to receive compliments. You tell them I love your dress and they start looking at it and saying, ah, th this old thing, we didn't ask if it's old or new. Somebody just told you it looks good. Learn to say thank you. Receive it. When you have insecurities, you don't even know how to receive. And you see, that's a problem. Because if you're going to be children of God, we have to learn to receive love. We have to learn to receive forgiveness. Because what people are being taught out here is you have to earn it. Let me tell you, there's somebody who asked me one time, how will I know that this is my wife? How will I know that this is my husband? And I always tell people, for me, I don't know about others, but for me, I always have one thing, which I always tell people I will say at the end of the day. One way I will know this is my wife at the end of the day, is I will look at her and I, I will be with her and I will realize I don't deserve her. That is one quality I always pray and I know I'll have with my wife. I will look at her and I will say truly, I don't deserve this woman. Because you see, we don't get what we deserve. If we are to get what we deserve, we are supposed to be in hell burning right now. How many people have not lied? If you have not lied or have never lied, lift up your hands. If you are lifting up your hands right now, you are lying. So you can see we have all fallen short of the glory. So one way to know, even if you are with the right person, is somebody you don't deserve. If you are with somebody who likes bragging, how you are so fortunate to have them, do you know how lucky you are to be with me? That's a red alert. That's a bad sign. I wouldn't want... A husband like that. I wouldn't want a wife like that who keeps telling me how lucky I am to be with them. No, for me, I want to be telling my wife how lucky I am to have her, not how lucky she is to have me. It is the attitude we must have. Don't get familiar. Remain grounded. Remain humble. Remain expectant. Just know that no matter how many times you may have been disappointed, there's always that real one that comes. Learn to accept it. Learn to receive it. Don't always feel like you have to strive. Okay? So I hope we are together for those who are joining us. Deal with the rejection, number one. Number two, I've said deal with the familiarity. It helps eliminate these insecurities that we have. And then the third point, uh, which usually causes us, 
to freak out. And I know uh, we've had maybe a glimpse of it from the video and all that uncertainty. When you are uncertain of the outcome, many people, especially right now with the COVID issue, the reason many people are panicking is because of uncertainty. You see, people are not certain how long will this thing last. People are not certain where they'll get their next meal. People are not even certain whether they'll be going back to their jobs. So because of that, people are really panicking. People are not certain of so many things. And so right now, the thing that causes a lot of insecurities in people is uncertainty. When people are not certain of the love of God in their lives, when people are not certain of how they are loved, I'm telling you, people will do all sorts of crazy things. I want to talk of a character. In the Bible, there's somebody called uh, Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth was actually living in a slum area. The name of the slum is Lodiba, which means place of no communication. You can imagine, no glory, no nothing. He was in a slum area. Then David was a king. Long story short, he looked for uh, Mephibosheth and said, I need this guy to come back. But when Mephibosheth came back, he was actually calling himself a dog. He asked David, what do you want with a dead dog like I? That is the problem when people are uncertain of their worth, when people are uncertain of their value, they will call themselves a dog. When people are uncertain of the thing that has been deposited in them, you will really sell yourself short. And so when, 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 when David called him, he called himself a dog because he thought he's not worthy to eat in the palace. And as I've said, we don't get what we deserve. Because if we are to get what we deserve, we would all supposed to be burning in hell. We get what the mercy of God allows us to get. So stop being uncertain about how much you are loved. Stop being uncertain because it will lead to insecurities. And an insecure person always brings harm to others. I once said that hurting people hurt others. When you are hurt and you never dealt with that hurt, you never addressed it, you will hurt so many people in future because you are just manifesting the pain that was never addressed, the pain that was never dealt with. So can we just release ourselves and learn to know that at the end of the day, we can be in this crisis, even right now as an entire globe, we are facing an entire crisis where we don't know when things are going to get back to normal. That can bring in a lot of uncertainty. So many people are losing hope. People are being depressed. Others don't even know they are depressed. They are down, they are low, but they are trying to put on a brave face. Why don't you become certain today? Understand that you are loved. If you're not a Christian, you're watching this, you don't know the love of God and all that, that is also another subject on its own which needs to be addressed. Because there's always a vacuum in us which love can never fill. There's a vacuum in us which the earthly things can never fill. So I hope we are getting somewhere. Don't forget the first one I said rejection. Address it. So many people have been rejected and they never dealt with it. They just brushed it off and they took it as something that is just like that. And then the second thing I've said is familiarity. And I've used Proverbs 13, 12. Continual disappointments. They make the heart grow sick. Can you imagine having a sick heart? You know it's very hard to know somebody who has a sick heart. And I'm not talking sick, the one that people cough and everything. It is sick emotionally. It means we cannot see the symptoms. You are not coughing. You are not having any difficulty in breathing. But at the end of the day, your heart is sick. Because when you wake up from the... Over, when you wake up in the morning, you are more tired than when you went to sleep. Because you slept, but you did not rest. There's a difference. You can lie in bed the entire night but you're just tossing and turning because you're not rested. Within you, you are not emotionally rested. So I hope these things are helping someone. I can see my time is really running and I really have to press in all these points there. So I want to, to, to address the fourth point, which I believe will be our last one. I'll emphasize on it a bit. 
and i believe it will help somebody the fourth thing uh because we need to finish breaking down these things that are dealing with their insecurities which cause us to lead other people on okay so the the, the last thing the number four point is direction direction the reason many people are insecure is because they lack direction it doesn't matter i'll give you an example if for example i want to go to mombasa uh, for those who are watching uh, I, who don't know where mombasa is it's just a, a town uh, here in kenya L let's say i'm supposed to be going to mombasa and i'm headed and uh, i'm facing the opposite direction which is going to nakuru no matter how fast i go the more i go the more lost i become because i'm in the wrong direction that is how important direction is you can be going very slow but as long as you're in the right direction you're good to go but the reason so many people are insecure the reason so many people are broken inside is because they don't even have a direction ask many people out here uh where do you see yourself in two years what is the direction of your life i'm telling you so many people don't even have a clue people just wake up and they say uh we, we are waiting to see what today brings we were not created to see what today brings we were created to bring what the day shall bring you are the one who is supposed to create it don't just sit back and say you are waiting to see what the day will bring understand your value understand your net worth understand who you are deal with these insecurities there's a very sad story of a guy who lived in a certain place that he was looking for diamonds that place was known for diamonds right and this man dug and dug and looked for diamonds and he didn't find and he decided you know what i'm going to sell this land i'm going to travel the world i'm going to look for diamonds because i want to be rich so you can imagine this person sold the land left packed everything and went to the ends of the world to look for diamonds then this new guy who bought this piece of land it it was an old man who didn't even uh, know much about diamonds he didn't know anything actually about diamonds so this old man while he was just digging uh one day this old man went with these diamonds to a certain shop and that shopkeeper asked him ah where did you get that and this old man replied and and said ah these stones they, they are everywhere they are everywhere in my farm i keep trying to get rid of them i've piled them but they are everywhere and the shopkeeper asked this old man are you even aware what you're in possession of and this old man was like what you mean these stones and the shopkeeper told him no th th those are not ordinary stones those are diamonds you see there's so many twists to this story there's somebody who left that land went to the ends of the earth to look for the thing that was just beneath him he went to the ends of the world to look for diamond which was right below him right beneath where he was living and then the other scenario the old man who didn't even know what he had he thought these ordinary stones so there are so many twists to this illustration there are people out there who have insecurities because first of all they don't even know the diamond they carry inside them they are going to the ends of the world to look for validation from a man from a woman when the diamond you are looking for is right inside you why, why are you going to a man to validate you why are you going to a woman to validate you you have to be whole fast before you bring someone in your life you have to be whole fast you have to have Christ in you first. You have to be whole to an extent nothing people say moves you. Stop going to the ends of the world like this man and the diamond is right beneath you. You have the diamond inside you. What are you still going to look for outside there? Then look at the old man. He had all this diamond, but he was not aware. He thought it was ordinary stones. When you are not aware of what you have, people will use you the shopkeeper will come and tell this old man okay give me those stones you are calling uh, useless stones which are all over your compound i need those useless stones when you don't know the value of the things god put in you you will call them useless 
You will even hate yourself for being different. Not knowing that that difference is actually your diamond. I tell people, don't tolerate people who try to change you in a costume you're not comfortable in. And that's why I've given you the example of David. He was given clothes that don't fit him. And he was kind enough to tell Saul, I respect you. You are the king. But I'm sorry, these clothes don't fit me. I, I can't fight in this. We have so many people out here who are insecure because they've been given clothes that don't fit them to fight in those clothes. They've been given love that doesn't fit them to fight in that kind of a situation. Be like David. Just tell them, no, thank you. I appreciate the good gesture. I appreciate that kind of gesture you are trying to help me. But that is not me. I have to be authentic to myself. Learn to be secure in who you are. When you deal with that, I'm telling you, you will stop leading people on. You will stop at breaking many people. Because the reason we hurt others is because we ourselves are hurting. Stop it. Today, don't be familiar. Don't be familiar. And also, don't lack direction. When you lack direction and you're familiar to these things, there's nothing new you can be told. There's somebody who said you can't teach old dog new tricks. There are people who feel they know it all. They've been through it all. But remember that story of the diamond. You have the diamond within you. You have the diamond inside you. Stop going to look for it outside there. Stop being insecure because of people's uh, compliments and comments. And let me finish as I wrap it up because uh, I can see my time is, is well spent. Uh, as I wrap it up, let me say, generally, I know people are listening all over. Uh, others uh, not from Kenya. But I want to speak uh, specifically and especially to those of us uh, in Kenya and, the, uh, and even the world at large. There's usually a lot of bullying. Uh, if you check the social media, there's a lot of cyber bullying and all that. The reason people are pulling each other down is because of this same topic, insecurity. When you're insecure in who you are, you really can't stand someone else's star. You'll always feel the need to deem it. But I always believe that you never know the person you're talking to. You never know the impact you're leaving. So that's why I know this platform is reaching many people. Whoever you are, wherever you are, I want to finish by saying this. There's a girl, uh, maybe some of you saw the video. I don't know what was wrong with her face. But somebody put up that picture and wrote the world's ugliest girl. I think she was born with a deformity. Something was wrong uh, with her face. And so people started saying, wow, what is wrong with her face? Why was this girl born? Is this even a human being? And on and on and the people talked so badly as though this girl will not read those comments and as though this girl doesn't have feelings. But there's one thing that I got when I watched the video of this girl later, who was called World's Ugliest Girl, there's something that got me. She said that as she went through the comments, she went through all those comments, having the hope that there will be one person who will just speak out on her behalf. She was hoping she will find one comment of somebody who is saying, stop talking bad about this girl's face. But she didn't find. You see, that is what broke me. That she was not reading the comments because she was interested. In, she was interested in the comments. She was reading them because she was looking for one out of hope. Just one person. Just the way God says, I have searched through the squares of Jerusalem, looking for one man, not even one. Did God find? Imagine. We are over 40 million Kenyans, and God cannot find one. Stop being quiet. When people are bringing others down because of the insecurities, shut it down. I don't believe in this issue of just laughing it off and joining the camp. The Bible says, blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the 
of the wicked, nor sit in the seat of mockers. Why are you together with people who are mockers? Don't tolerate people who like to mock others. And remember at the end of the day, that is your space. If somebody comes on your wall and says something you are not happy with, you have the right to just delete it and to unfriend them. It is not your work to keep people happy out here. It is your work to be you and not to be insecure. Learn to be confident. And I will tell you one thing. Most time when you are confident, people who lack it will call you prideful. They will call you arrogant. Because when people don't understand something, they abuse it and they hate it. So it's okay if people don't get you. You are not called to be understood by everyone. You are called to fulfill your purpose and your destiny. So just like the story of that girl, stand out from the rest. When people are saying she's ugly, I wish somebody could have risen up and said no. Can you be that one voice in Kenya? Can you be that one voice in your country, wherever you're watching me from? Can you be that one person who's not insecure? I post a lot of things on Facebook and other social platforms. I get very negative comments sometimes from people who just want attention, sometimes from people who I think are just hurt and they're looking for a place to vent. The reason I don't get in an exchange with these people is because I'm secure in who I am. So when you talk bad, it just shows who needs the healing between the two of us. Don't get to their level. Be secure and don't hurt others. Don't lead others on. Just be secure in who you are. I hope somebody got something and that you guys were blessed and you are not bored. Okay? Today I need to have so many jokes and all those things because I just wanted the message to sink in and help somebody. Don't die alone. Don't feel depressed. Don't feel suicidal and keep quiet. Reach out for help. Don't be insecure and die alone. Reach out for help. I'm here. Other people are here. Don't ever feel embarrassed about your situation. Reach out. God loves you. God bless you. Thank you. God called generation. Uh, check out the page. God called generation. I believe on all social uh, platform, Instagram and all that. Thank you guys for this honor to just talk on this topic of dealing with my insecurities. I hope somebody has dealt with the insecurities with those four points. Four I believe is enough because a few words are enough for a wise person. Thank you. God bless you. Have a wonderful time. Uh, I can't say the exact time because different time zones in different countries. Whatever the time is in your place, have a wonderful uh, time. God bless you. Thank you.